Uh, hey guys, I'm going to do another golf class video for you, and this is going to focus on Tour 10, and it's going to be for more kind of uh, advanced win play discussion. Uh, I'm trying to think, Tour 10, so in terms of 3-wood, I'd like to, you know, Sniper and Guardian, they both have their benefits. You can kind of go either way on your 3-wood. Uh, I don't think it's really going to matter there which one you choose. Um, I'm trying to think some of the holes. Your best bet for uh, the uh, long iron is probably going to be Goliath. Um, if you have a half decent B52, I think that'll be pretty decent. I don't think there's any real need for backspin in this tour for the most part. Uh, I think there's a couple holes where you can use it. It'll be helpful, but uh, not essential. So you can avoid, you know, putting on a Saturn. I, I definitely wouldn't use a backbone on a tour, uh, you know. I, I, I try to stick away from those tour two clubs. Um, that means extra mile backbone. Is there any other one guys like to use? I don't think so. So uh, I try to stay away from those altogether, especially in the late tours. They are not designed to be advanced level clubs. Uh, the biggest thing with extra mile is, you know, the accuracy is just not good enough. You should not be using that club. Uh, guys do it all the time, though. Uh, some more power to them. Uh, I like when they're using it, especially when they have to hit it on a shootout hole. It makes it easier for me to beat them. So, uh, you know, no problem with uh, if guys want to do that. I, you know, I just suggest kind of taking advantage of them uh, the best you can. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, instead of playing Apocalypse, uh, I would do what I did with my last video, which would be kind of take it down to an Apoc 5. But I really think Thor's the better club for this uh, tour. You don't really need a ton of core. Uh, um, you don't really need a ton of, um, what's the word, curl in this tour. So, um, you know, if you don't have a POC 5, uh, even if you do have a POC 5, I think the accuracies are pretty similar. Top spins are pretty similar. Uh, the only thing you really get the extra benefit of is uh, with a POC 5, because you won't have enough backspin, is that you get uh, the, um, the backspin boost with a Thor, because Apocalypse won't have the, uh, like, even close to 74. I think it has more like 40-something at that point. So, uh, I would definitely, you know, if, if, if the decision was between Apoc 5 and Thor 5, or even Thor 4, I think your decision is Thor. Now, um, you know, I think I can get through this tour no problem with Thor. <sighs> so, uh, let me just go ahead and do it. I'll just switch to the Thor. Um, and since I'm going to use Hammerhead, basically treat it as a sniper. Because as you see, you know, it's very comparable. It, it, in my opinion, it's just the better club. You have an extra five yards distance, which you don't have. So it's, do you want to sacrifice .4 ball trail, or do you want five extra yards? And to me, the answer all the time is I want the extra five yards. Now, it's three yards power, but it's an extra at least... 10 backs, uh, 10 top spin. So 10 top spin is going to give you at minimum two yards. Uh, in certain cases, it'll give you even more than that. So uh, just something to consider. Um, you know, it might be 10 yards longer, to be honest with you. And everything else is virtually identical. So um, if I play with Hammerhead, you see my adjustments are going to be identical to Sniper. So the only reason I'm using it is just because it's my preferred club. I have no use for Sniper. Um, I think it's, you know, out of the bottom four uh, woods here, 
especially when we're talking about max everything. I think it's probably your weakest option, uh, with the exception of uh, maybe Guardian. Uh, I think it might be a little bit better than this club. Just a touch, just a touch. Um, the biggest, you know, is being that top spin. Guardian not having top spin probably makes it the worst out of these four. But uh, Sniper, if we're talking Max Cat, Max Hammerhead, uh, Sniper is probably the, the second worst out of these four um, behind Guardian. And, uh, you know, Hammerhead and Cataclysm, especially once Cataclysm gets up to uh, a seven here. Um, and as soon as accuracy, I think ball guy comes into like 4.2 or something, something crazy and accuracy goes into the eighties, like 84 or something, 82, somewhere in that ballpark. As soon as that gets into the eighties, as much power as it has, that is no question without question, the best club in the game. I mean, there's no, <coughs> it's not even up for debate. Uh, the only one that you know would give it a run for its money here is Hammerhead, but it's still not even a, it's not even a fair fight. Uh, I can't wait to uh, you know do the side by side with those two, so I can see it on the same screen, um, because you know Cataclysm's just going to have it in every department, and uh, Hammerhead is just a beast. So for it to be that much better than Hammerhead is just sick. I mean, the only thing you're giving up is a little bit of accuracy, and that's it. But if you hit perfect ball anyway, uh, accuracy goes to 100. And, uh, you know, it's essentially a perfect club at that point. So you're talking about probably the best club in the game. Better than Thor 7, better than Apoc 7. Um, and the, the biggest reason for that, in my opinion, is... Uh, you know, the difference between a POC 6 and a POC 7 was kind of minor. Whereas when I look at the difference between Cat 6 and Cat 7, it's pretty major in my opinion. I mean, you know, I, I'm going to get an extra 10 top spin there, and I'm going to get twice the accuracy. I'm going to go from 60 to 80-something. And that, to me, is just a major jump. A major jump. When I went from a POC 6 to a POC 7, it was, it was negligible. I, could, I was take it or leave it at that point. It was like I would have rather had the cat cards and got my cat up to a seven, but uh, I'll take what I was given. Um, I'll take the POC seven. I'm not going to complain about that. And uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and do some holes here. Did I switch? I think I switched drivers. I believe I decided. Uh, so if you want to talk in terms of what what you should be using. Um, I would definitely highly recommend, uh, you know, everything I kind of went over there. Thor's as opposed to Apocalypse. I think it's better to have the accuracy boost on this tour. Oh, that's another thing. I might not even be able to match anybody because I have too many trophies. I should pull out my other phone see if I can match myself. <laughs> That'll make it really interesting. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. I probably can't even match myself, so it probably doesn't even matter. Let me try it real quick. So again, uh, while I'm while I'm trying to do this, let me take a look here. You see my bag set up. Um, I've really started to talk to you guys about some advanced shots. Um, and uh, especially with like the wind guides that I've been putting out um, so feel free to check those videos out I think they're very beneficial um, I feel like I'm you know honing in on some things uh, and doing some things you know better so let's take a look here let's try to do this real quick yep, hold on downloading let me get the tour real quick ever since I uh, Uh, been playing um, I've been alternating devices here and I'll like close the app down and uh, have to reinstall it or not reinstall it but uh, reinstall the game data every time that I switch between my two accounts on the on the one phone um, more so than anything I did that on the tournaments 
Um, I tried when I was playing the tournament to, to stay on the same phone um, just to have, you know, the same timing. Um, I, I think it's just something that, you know, helped out a little bit. And as you can see, you know, they, they still don't even want to match. They're not even matching me with myself here. So, um, it looks like I might have to play some replays here for you guys because I really don't have a choice. So, I might as well just let this spin out a little bit. And then we'll try to do that. see if I can't get a couple games in for you guys. Um, I do have a lot of Tour 10 content out there for you. I have it on both accounts. I have some really old stuff from my main account. And I have some, you know, more current stuff on the, uh, I think I put like four hours of content using like Thor 2 and 3 for you guys on Tour 10. So you do have a lot of resources out there. But I wanted to just focus a little bit more on like advanced technique for this video and that's why I'm putting it out there. So let's take a look here. Um, and you know it's holes like this that I think that this tour has really eased up. Because this is an easy, easy, easy hole. And uh, you know this never used to be there and I see all these guys complaining about Tour 10, and I'm just like, well, what's going on? Like, I, I feel like you guys should be thankful that they have this stuff on there. This is very helpful that they put holes like this on here. Uh, Tour 10 used to be challenging, in my opinion. Like, it's holes like this that are completely softening this up. Now, this isn't the easiest hole in the game or anything, but, uh, you know, it's nice to see holes like this come on. Um, and I have, you know, mentioned this hole in the past on some other videos. Um, I like to do it quite differently than the, the way you just saw that guy do it. So first off, I'll use my top spin here. But I like putting a little bit of left spin, just kind of riding it up through here. And you see, when I put the left spin on there, that it just kind of eases its way through there. Now I'm going to take off a little bit. And the only reason is because the wind's pointed that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this my target line, maybe somewhere in here, and I'm actually going to play the wind, which is actually pulling back. And uh, I'm going to pull back at a rate probably about, uh, you know, seven rings here or so for this 10 wind. Of course, perfect ball. And let's see if I didn't take off just the right amount. It looks pretty good. It's coming up through there. Now I did take off a little bit too much. It's it's a, it's a lot better if I get it down there farther. But with uh, not playing Thor 5 ever in my entire life, I'd say I'm pretty happy with that shot. <laughs> it went up through there, didn't hit the bunker, didn't hit the trees. Um, I played it about 1.5 per ring, give or take, more or less, in the ballpark. Um, which is under the number that you're supposed to play it. So since accuracy 64, it would, you know, leave you to believe, you know, 1.7 at max, which is pretty close to where I was. It was close to max distance there, especially when I pulled it back the nine rings because then it took off my power ball um, by pulling it back that way. It was like I didn't have the Kingsmaker on almost. And look, this would have been a simple, simple shot had I just got it up to end bringer range. I would have I would have made this no question on this guy. Now, I'm assuming that I'm probably still going to make it anyway. It basically comes down to perfect ball at this point. I'm pretty sure. Um, with an easy win like this and, uh, you know, horn it on here, um, I'm going to go about three rings. And I'm pretty sure that should be enough. Uh, I play about 1.7-ish, and I know it's not terrible when I do that. And, of course, I get my perfect ball. And it just comes in too hard. Wow. So it looks like it hit that. And, like I said, 
you know, if I would have hit that just a little bit farther, this would have been a total just gimme. It would have just been, you know, guaranteed if I would have got that to end ringer range. I would have never had to worry about that. It had more to do about the angle, and it, it looks like it was kind of landing a, uh, a down slope. You could kind of see the way my ball trail was moving there. That uh, there was a couple glitchy spots where it looked like it was kicking forward, and it looks like I might have actually hit one of those. But it's holes like that, this that they put in here, that I'm like, you know, you can eagle this hole and just win the match outright. This tour, you can just tear up because they put holes like this on there. If I would have got that to end ring range, I would have made that 10 out of 10 times with that wind. Um, it just would have been, you know, up there perfect, and I wouldn't have had to worry about that kind of glitchy. Once you get to that short iron, sometimes you get that where it rolls out a little bit different. But for the sake of this video, this is probably better. So we're going to get to see. Of, so there's about 10 different ways I play this dang hole. So uh, I can't really tell you, you know, a concrete way that you have to play this. But uh, I am going to play it more like this guy because the wind's telling me to do so. And I'm assuming I'm going to be able to outperform this guy anyway. Because of the, oh, that might actually help a shot. Because I don't think I was going to, I don't think I was too happy with the way that he was lining it up. And then that shank, yeah, it pulls it back. He's a lot closer than he would have been. <laughs> so that shank really helped that guy out. Um, I'm trying to think of this hole. And I know that you all, you're always shooting down to a lower elevation here. And like I said, I'm going to very, you know, model this guy's, uh, shot type here but uh, I'm going to utilize more backspin because I have it um, and again like I like I mentioned before you know you're shooting down to a, a lower target so you have to play more rings so instead of playing like the usual like maybe 2.0 that you should play here I'm going to play more like 1.7 1.5 somewhere in there I'm going to play like seven rings here um, I'm not going to really use curl on this because it's pointed that way. And this is what differs from my usual shot because I would usually curl this. And I would usually curl it pretty good. But I'm not curling it here. Why? Because of the fact that the ball is, you know, it, it, it's putting like two or three side spin on it to the right naturally because of the way that it's pointed, the wind's pointed to the right. And yes, I got that platinum chest. That's what I was really hoping for. Um, I had a feeling that it was coming because I've basically got a whole bunch of golds. So I'm really glad that that came for me. And that was a really good win for me. So I'm happy about that. And uh, we're going to keep rolling with this video. And, you know, that's the one thing that I want to, you know, just... If I can stress the importance of, you know, just understanding the way that the wind works. You saw my ball trail, how I had it way off to the right of the green, near the fringe. And that's, that is the part that guys just aren't understanding. They just don't have a good enough grasp of. And that's why I'm trying, trying to put words to it to explain it to you guys. You saw how I was aiming. It looked like I was aiming on the fringe, right? So you have to visualize the shot. And just say, oh, well, you know, I'm not, I barely need to curl this. And you saw, I hit it, and it went right at the hole. I barely curled it. I mean, that's just case in point, like just showing you the dramatic effects of the wind. And if you can't visualize that shot, this game just becomes, you know, harder and harder for you to uh, play. Um, so, and the, the best way to kind of, you know, combat that is to just practice. Um, you know, I try to put out all this content for you guys. Try to get you uh, improve, uh, you know, the quality of your shots and just kind of visualize things a little bit better. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully it's working. Hopefully it's helping for you guys. Um, we're going to keep doing some holes here. Uh, I do have... You know, we've only played one hole, and I'm already 20 minutes in. I thought, you know, some of that club selection, I, I don't always, you know, give you, give you guys that to kind of help you 
out try to figure out you know setting up your bag always the best so I wanted to go ahead and give you guys that you see this guy's using a navigator in this video uh, you know this is a hole where you could definitely do that if you want uh, I probably will and again this is hitting down to a lower elevation the way I like to do this is I like to do it with backspin. See, I got four backspin on it. It's really going to slow my shot down. And that's what I like to see here, as opposed to getting too aggressive here. And you know, I'm shooting down to a lower elevation, like I'm saying here. So instead of playing the usual 1.7, you know, maybe I'll play uh, 1.5. I'll go, you know, close to 10 rings here, and I'll actually counter the wind. Now, I'm countering the wind because I don't want that extra ball trail to start pushing it and you know that shank cost me wow I shanked it left and it actually pulled it left this hole can be a little touchy so what I was trying to do which is it, it looks like I went one ring too many because I usually like to account for that one ring and it looks like I didn't quite account enough for that one ring but that's okay we'll try to you know, scramble a little bit here so I can show you just a, a little bit of variety here. It's okay if you make a mistake. Um, it's just kind of how you react after that mistake. Uh, tip number one I have for that is, uh, you know, just keeping your composure and uh, getting out of the trouble. You put yourself in trouble, well, on your next shot, try to make sure that it gets out of the trouble. That's step one to making the eagle still here. Is to be in trouble and get out of trouble. To give yourself at least a pitch at it. Now you're seeing that the wind that they gave me is kind of screwy anyway. So you know I have to really work for this sucker. Um, and you know it was really close. It, it, it was about to be perfect and then you saw it just roll down the hill. Oh wow, this is actually a bunker. So uh, what you're going to see me do here... I'm going to spin it up towards the uh, towards the opening there, get kind of close to where this guy is. And I like to play this about 1.5 per ring. So this will be out towards the bullseye. So I need to visualize. Okay, so this is where it's going to land, right? And I'm okay with that. But uh, with the way that this is into the wind, it's going to really check up. It's going to really check up here. So what you're going to see me do is I'm going to add just a hair of power kind of go yellow here and just kind of counter this the best that I can because I know that it's going to just check up uh, and I did hit the rough it was because of that shank I didn't have to get quite so aggressive but uh, you know I actually don't mind the rough too much because the ball seems to come in a bit lower it actually makes sometimes the pitch a little bit easier uh, but again you know perfect ball is going to be paramount to making this next shot here without perfect ball I'm going to miss it so that's the big difference about fairway and uh, rough and my timing was a little slow there so you know I've missed left on these last two shots for whatever reason <coughs> and it looks like it might end up costing me the hole and not definitely but there's a chance that it's going to cost me the hole but uh there's no sense in giving up yet. You know, I still got a fighting chance. I have an easy wind. Uh, it's pointed dead straight. <laughs> so, first thing I like to do is I like to go max here. Um, I cut that distance in half. Cut it in half again. Cut it in half. It's basically an eighth. So, um, I'm assuming uh, this is a little funny. This is a little wonky in here. So I might come up just a tiny bit. It looks a little bit better right here. So I might try to play the play the shot right here and just try to get it lined up. Um, and it looks like, you know, I only have to go about a ring here. More or less. When I cut it into eights like that, it's only about a ring. So. And I just missed my perfect ball. Means I miss out on the eagle. So, you know, this is a very rare instance for me where I made a mistake here. Um, 
Now you don't see, you know, that kind of dramatic mistake from me very often. I'm going to go ahead and we were just going to another hole that was just, you know, poorly executed start to finish on that hole. Uh, but the amount that I missed was by so minute. Like I barely rolled in the way. And realistically, if I would have hit perfect ball there, I still would have been in the fairway on my drive. If I would have hit perfect ball on the second shot, I would have still been in the fairway getting out of trouble. It just goes to show you how little a mistake that you make can end up costing you the hole. Um, and I did it three times there. Um, I was just off of perfect on my drive, just off of perfect, well, I was two rings off of perfect on the second shot, and then I was one ring off on my third shot. Those three mistakes together cost me the hole. Um, this is unfortunate here that uh, we're seeing duplication holes here. Um, it's harder to go through the trees on, on, on this wind. I'm not sure that I necessarily say that, you know, this is the best approach. Um, if you are going to go through the trees, I don't recommend doing it like the way that this guy just did. Um, he got very lucky the way that he just played that. I don't know if this is a tape or whatever, um, irrelevant, but uh, do not attempt to go through the trees like that. You have to land it far too perfect to get through to the other side. Um, it's just creating unnecessary problems. Uh, it's like I said on this hole, the way that you should be going through the trees is with left spin on this, no question, because the fairway slopes. I mean, you can see it. You can see the way that the ball trail goes through here. It's With left spin, it's easier. When you put right spin on it, you have to land it like within, with it, you have to land it within a yard of, you know, perfect in order to pull it off that way. And uh, so I'm trying to visualize like how much I need to go over on a win like this. And I'm going to go about three rings. As you can see, I just kind of grooved it through there. Um, it's not too bad. We got another easy wind here. Tell me you're not going for the dunk. <laughs> oh my god. What a dork. Unbelievable. Okay, this makes at least a little more sense. <clears throat> so. What I find funny is when you have an easy win like this, like kind of going for too hard of a shot, it's just kind of one of those ironic things to me. Like, uh, especially, like, I couldn't tell if he was about, it looked like he was about to go for that dunk, and it's just like, why? <laughs> this, the way that the wind was pointed, this is like a, this is like an easy, easy shot. Again, I'm going to be in that same problem where it has... I feel like I could hit that, uh, you know, that little uh, groove there. And again, I'm more towards, it looks like I'm not seeing that run out glitch here, which is good. Again, I'm going to do kind of the same MO that I did last time, which was about three rings here. Um, of course, I'm going to, you know, play it this way, pull straight down. A little bit over three rings here. Perfect ball. Nothing but cup. That's the way I should have had it both times. I was a little unlucky with the first one. It, it just looked like there was something funny about that, something glitchy about that uh, par four. Uh, just the way the ball was landing just seemed a little bit fishy last time. Um, but that's okay because it, it, it let us get to the part three. I wanted to see that. I wanted to be able to show you guys. But I also want to show you about holding out there. Because if you get that hole, you can just win outright. And uh, there's two drivables set on this uh, setup as well. Um, and if you're a little uncomfortable about those two holes, because um, I don't know if we're going to get them in this video or not, uh, I have plenty of content showing you guys how to play the... Uh, you know, multiple approaches 
to the, to the other two drivable par fours, like from the uh, from the UK course. And those are the ones from the UK tournament that you guys played too. I'm sure you already have, you know, a pretty good game plan for that hole anyway. But uh, this is just good, kind of goes to show you as to why, uh, you know, this tour, you should be able to kind of barrel through it a little bit. If you can just, uh, you know, focus on definitely perfect ball, um, one of the most crucial things, and being able to bounce back. You see, you know, I played that hole, that one hole, I played shot one, two, and three, horrendous. And then get to the next hole and just completely erase that from your memory. It's not even its not even something I'm worried about. Um, and here's one of the holes that I was just talking about. So this one would be drivable, but with this wind, it's not drivable. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep some Kingmakers on. I think for this tour, Kingmaker is a great ball. The only other one that I think is a really good one is uh, Katana as well. So let me just for this sake here of this hole, let's just switch down to Katana. These are the two balls that I really like for this tour. And the way that I like to do this is kind of with like two top spin, but since it's into the wind, I'm going to do three. And I'll do about four rings here. I'll play it about, you know, since it's straight into the wind, more like two per ring. As opposed, and plus, you know, shooting to a lower target, kind of like last time, how I was mentioning. Which means that you usually have to play in it. Oh, and I just hit that. Uh, it doesn't, it does, it's no big deal. But what it does is it keeps me from running out the whole way towards the bottom of the fairway. But you have to be a little bit, you have to be a little cautious. So the way that you just saw me do that to where I was, you know, cutting it close. You can't hit it, you can't barrel it into like the, you know, middle or third, third of the way into that fairway there. You want to do it kind of towards the towards the rough there um, especially when I put that extra spin on to make sure that it doesn't run through that fairway and let's see what this guy does so you can kind of see it and you're seeing hit seat this is what I'm talking about right here and it just didn't stop that's what I was talking that was exactly what I was telling you about how you need to avoid now one way to avoid it is to just put less top spin so if you did no top spin for example you could land it there no no question um, so just something to consider. Um, now what I'm going to do is because it opens up the fairway, you see aiming over here doesn't open up the fairway, so I'm going to bring this in right to left. And I'm only going to use one bar of backspin because I know that into the wind it's going to create extra backspin. So you're going to see me put it on the left here, and you know I'm going to be max club. So you see I'm putting it off the corner, and then I'm going to play my 12 rings on top of that. You know, I might just put just a touch bit of counter because I think it might need it. Oh, I needed more than that. So you saw that I went, this is kind of a perfect example. This is what I'm talking. You saw me go the 12 rings. That's supposed to be spot on. And you can see power-wise, I was pretty spot on. But what happened to that ball? It got kicked way out to the right. So when we're talking high winds like this, that's something that you have to consider. So you either need to counter it with some side spin, which in this case I was unwilling to do, or curl it. And the reason, you know, you saw how I was setting up the shot. I wanted to aim to the left so I could keep it from... Oh, that was close. That guy almost got that to hop in there, which would have been really nice. But uh, we're going to go to overtime, and uh, I'm great that we're getting to the uh, bonus hole here, par 3. So it's good for the video. We have two holes where we didn't get to it, so that's kind of annoying. It doesn't make the best video when that happens. So, you're seeing, you know, firsthand some of the effects of these winds. Um, now, let me talk a little bit about what I like to do here. 
So here I'm going more towards the max. What I like to do is I like to utilize this slope kind of like way up here. But you see, to do this, I got to get way up here. Um, I'm going to do just a little touch more backspin than that. Two bars. Um, and I'm going to need to go, you know, an over adjustment here, which is going to be, uh, you know, six rings at least. And again, I don't really like to curl this. So the only problem with my approach on this is it gets it way high up to the left, as you're seeing. But I think the way that it comes in angle-wise, and kind of you're seeing it firsthand, is it's really utilizing that slope this way. And that's why I like bringing it in like that, because you, you, you kind of get it close every time, like dangerously close. Like you can make it that way. So what I like to do is I like to cheat that left side so it really takes the momentum of the, the hill. I don't like to try to do anything too fancy with the curl because that's when your shot arc starts changing dramatically. And um, not only that, uh, there's a lot of other things you have to factor in. I really don't want to get into this video because it's just a little complicated to talk about. But when you put the curl on it, it kind of changes your landing zone a bit. And I don't think, you know, people necessarily understand that or why and uh, it's a little complicated to get into so I'm really not going to touch that one and this actually looks pretty darn solid too this looks like he might actually miss on the right of the hole which I don't see a lot of guys do <laughs> that is pretty well done it's very hard to get it on the right side of the uh, hole coming in there um, and again, like I was mentioning before, you know, I'm probably playing replays. Um, when you force yourself to play, I'm assuming, you know, most of you guys, you're not playing replays because, like, nobody's on tour 10. I mean, but you're seeing, you know, it's just spinning forever before it actually gives me somebody. You know, most of the time, especially if you're in the 3,000 trophy range, picking up a game in tour 10 is simple. It's simple. And playing live opponents is always easier. I mean, you always see when you watch these replays, you know, every two or three videos, you'll see the guy put it to, you know, half a yard. And it just kind of like, uh, you know, makes your progress go that much slower. But I'm assuming for the most part, you guys probably aren't playing replays. So, uh, I mean, the only reason that I don't back out of this and avoid replays is because it's basically inevitable. I'm looking for guys in the 3,000 trophy range, three to 3,500 trophy range, and the games, even if I back out 100 times, uh, they're not going to match me with uh, these replays. I'm always going to... They're not going to match me with those guys that are looking for the game. They're going to just give me the replay just like this, like you just, just saw. How it scrolled forever and then gives me the replay. Same kind of thing here. Um, you know, we're beating this hole to death. A little unfortunate. Uh, you see where I'm going here. Um, and again, I'm shooting to a lower elevation. You know, about four, now five rings here is probably spot on. See me go over here, five rings, um, and I'll pretty much blast this for the most part. I don't think there's any real risk of me going too far, so might as well. It just kind of goes right through there. I might have just over over adjusted a slight touch you'll see that's why I'll put the left spin on it takes that bunker kind of out of play and make sure that you, you your momentum is kind of going as left as possible and you just kind of ride the slope as opposed to a bouncing in that bunker the only thing that the, the most typical thing that the way from the way I play it is every once in a while I'll land it to left and it'll roll into the rough but it's usually to the point that it'll only roll into the rough after it's to the tree. So you're not dead. You don't you don't roll under a tree for the most part. Um, and let's see here. 
I can, uh, so I'm going to be right at Min Club again. Like I said, I've been using right around one point. I'm actually glad about this because I've been, I've been wanting to test my theory about if this is uh, 1.7 or not because that's what I've been using on Min Club. I've been using about 1.7. I've been wanting to test this. Wait, is it downwind or into the wind? Into the wind. Into the wind. Make sure that I don't take off any distance. And at 1.7, five rings is not enough, six rings. So let's test this theory, see if this is anywhere remotely close. And it looks like it is, but it looks like it might have been spot on five rings there. So what would five rings be? Almost 2.0. So maybe at Min Club, it's, it's more of a 2.0 for a Hornet. Now, one of the reasons that 1.7 might have been working for me is because I'm not always right at Min Club when I'm using that number. I'll be a little in from it. And uh, what you're seeing there, since that one was on the spot on Min Club, it was probably, you know, four yards inside that, which I think is, you know, very very close to Min Club. So again, this guy probably has to go. You know, five. That's pretty spot on. That's right around where I would go. Um, I'm assuming with the counter that he's putting on. I'm sh assuming we're definitely uh, watching a tape. That counter that he was putting on is really hurting his shot because he only needed to go five rings there. Probably six rings total. But uh, you saw how much he countered there, and it just completely wiped the shot too much. Um, so what the approach that I like to use is more of the overcorrection method. I never use curl on those because you can't be as precise with your aim arrow. So I highly recommend when you get in there to those short clubs, short iron, wedge, don't use your curl at all. I don't think that's a smart move. Because then you never know, well, am I on 100% power? Am I on 99% power? Am I on... And it's really a lot nicer to be precise on that, knowing that you're right in the center of the circle. So let's see here. Now, in terms of hammerhead, I'm going to be more at min club, and I like using the backspin method for this hole. And I like using the counter spin that you're seeing me put on. Now, the way that this is going to land right here is going to be more towards the hole. And why is that? Because the left, the right, uh, the right, the left wind. So you're going to see me do my correction. It's more of a 1.3 adjustment. So you're going to see me only go about eight rings here. I'm going to underplay the wind, but I'm going to counter it because it's right to left. Ah, it's not getting there. So I was just a little lazy with the way that I pulled it back. Uh, now what I noticed on this hole is that tends to happen from time to time, but you saw that I got it online. Um, using that method, if I would have got that to the hole, it would have been, it would have gave me the best chance to get as close as possible to beat this guy. And that's what I want to give you guys, is the best chance to beat. And uh, you know the great ball that I hit, it kind of took off a little bit of distance, so I probably lost you know, 0.3 of a yard because of that. It wasn't the end of the world. Like, it wasn't going to, you know, change the shot and make it uh, to the hole. But, uh, again, if you can counter to the right and then also do it with some curl, let's see if this guy kind of uses it. Yes. So the method this guy is using is exactly the way that you should be doing this. Now, if the... Uh, if the wind's the other way, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to be using this method that we just did, or that we both did here. And his, his didn't make it to the hole either, so I'm assuming he's going to be outside my ball because he used more slope. And that's one of the re... Oh, wow. There's no way. 1.82? Give me a break. I got robbed. So, again, you're kind of seeing... You know, kind of the replay thing happening where, you know, this can just go on for forever. You, you, you just never know. So playing replays can be sometimes your worst enemy. But uh, I can beat these replays, so I'm, I'm not tremendously worried about it. Um, you know, just a little bit more concentration. Like I said, 
uh, you know, just a little bit more de distance on that, I would have beat 1.82 easily. Uh, it's just because it came up uh, short is the only reason. And like I said, like next time I played it, since I haven't played this in a while, um, you know, sometimes it just takes, you know, one or two tries to kind of just get, get realigned the way that you need to be. And again, I just needed ever so slightly more power. It's the only thing that cost me on that shootout. And like I was mentioning, let's just say hypothetically on that last shootout hole that we had a reverse wind where it was left to right. Well, I wouldn't use the right curl there. Because doing that is going to take it more up the slope like you saw his shot. Like you saw in his replay, where it went up the slope and back down, I don't recommend that shot. He got very lucky to keep it where he did. Um, and uh, it, it, it just creates the ball kind of going more out of control. So what I would do is I would do just a touch of left and just a touch. Uh, if the wind was reversed, I'd do just a left, just a little. I wouldn't even curl it at all. I just use my side spin, maybe like two bars, and then I do the same approach where I landed at about the same, and I'd have to use the slope a little bit. Unfortunately, I would have to use the slope, like kind of up higher where his ball. It's because there's no avoiding it at that point. There's really nothing you can do about it. You see what I'm doing here is kind of like a, a counter curl with a uh, with this one, and the biggest reason is because this fairway is so sloped. You can see it rolling left to right, so you'll see me kind of keep it out here in the center. You know, all that left curl and counter stuff, it just kind of counters that wind quite a bit. So on this hole, you know, especially since you see the side wind, uh, I want to, you know, kind of reiterate this uh, kind of this counter approach. Think about what that wind, you know, it's three or four. That wind is going to make it go three or four yards offline after the after it bounces. So you have to consider that into your adjustment. So there's a couple ways to do that. Let's just say, because I think I'm going to be on B52 again. So there's two ways that, you know, you can kind of do it. You can do it with some counter. First off, I want to see, you know, my, it looks like I'm more in the men club. This is actually kind of a hard. So I'm going to do kind of, a, you know, a blend of the two a little bit. Um, you see I'm putting some right spin on this. I'm going to try to make this my landing zone, but I'm also, on top of that, right spin I'm putting. So first off, I probably need to go, for example, maybe six rings here. Um, it's probably pretty good um, because I'm more towards min club, but I'm also going to counter on top of because of that wind, the way that it's pointed. Let's see if I can't. And it's coming in a little hot, but it is coming in online. That's the point that I want to reiterate here. So if you see what I just did there, now I needed to put back just ever so slightly, but you can see that's what it took to keep that ball online. And that's just kind of what I want to, you know, stress the importance of, is especially on crosswinds, I don't think guys realize how much wind actually affects. There's certain guys that I see, they get it. Um, I, I can just see the way that certain guys line shots up, um, and you know I'm extremely worried about the, their approach. It's like this is going to be a hard match, but there's not enough guys doing it. Um, but uh, 
you know, that's kind of the purpose of this video. I mean, if, if you guys are watching it and you can just kind of absorb and just kind of think about it and kind of start to figure out, oh, the effects of these winds, like what exactly is going on, it can give you kind of, uh, you know, a good guideline to go off of. And that's what I'm trying to do here with these videos here. So uh, hopefully for the most part they're working for you guys. And um, again, kind of like what I was mentioning here, um, I am going to use a little bit of curl on this, and but it's the curl that I'm going to use is going to be entirely for counter curl. So the only thing you're going to see me do here is use counter curl, which means that I'm going to look at that wind and say, oh, everything I need to put on this is just the counter that effect of the wind because it's changing my shot arc. So that's all you're going to see me do on this one. And this is one of the most tricky winds that you'll see on this hole. And again, I'm, I'm really kind of fortunate. I'm glad that I have it. Um, the Kingsmaker here. You see how I'm kind of using the slope with my uh, shot trail here? That's what you're going to see me do here. And again, um, you know, i got to be worrisome about wind. So even at a 9, I'm going to go like 6 range. I'm going to play this 1.5, even though I'm supposed to play 1.7. I'm going to go inside 1.5. So that's about 1.5 1 .5 per ring, which is about 6 rings. And you see the curl that I'm putting on here is more for counter curl than anything. It looked like just an ever so slightly I overplayed it. Uh, I wanted to be a little cautious. You know, hit it out towards the middle of the fairway. I was a little cautious with that wind because uh, you could see my landing zone. It was more towards the middle, center, middle center. And like I said, under perfect six situations, you saw me do it the first time. You know, the wind was straight. It was pointed straight. So what you saw me do with my play the first time we did that is I intentionally kind of went very, very left on the fairway up there. Because I like the way that it just naturally uses the slope. And what it does when you use the high, you know, go very left and use all that fairway slope, what it basically essentially guarantees is you're not going to keep it up there. Where I'm sure you've seen it, I'm sure you've all done it, to where you basically, you know, ride the slope and then it stays up on the top shelf. When you play it my way, like uh, like how I mentioned, I like to do it, you know, very left, and then just use all that fairway slope. It virtually guarantees there's no way your ball's going to stay up there. So it's literally almost an impossibility. Um, there's a couple things you can do. You can run it up into the rough on accident uh, because you didn't take off enough. For example, that's one of the mistakes you can make. But uh, I've seen guys even go up in the rough and it still rolls down towards the green. <laughs> so, not necessarily the end of the world. Oh, man, this is brutal. I would have been able to go for this green if I would have kept my... Uh, so this is actually going to keep me from going from the green. So this is another shot I could have shot. I knew I should have put that apocalypse on and just... That's ah, brutal. Um, let me think about this. I'm pretty sure I can't reach this fairway with a four or five. Never hurts to try. Now I'm going to aim for this corner here, and I'm going to do it with curl. What do you got to lose? <laughs> four or five. Almost on the green here. So, uh, you saw what I kind of did there. I did it with some curl. I did it with, uh, you know, and all I was trying to do was hit somewhere on that, uh, you know, edge of the rough. It was what I was kind of using for my aim. And then did it with some curl to 
kind of bring it back towards the green. Um, under normal circumstances, downwind, um, you know, I, I don't dislike the approach that I did no matter what. Even, let, let's say hypothetically, you know, you, you don't have that ball, um, but blasting it even with a Titan has its own benefits. If you blast it with a Titan and get it way down there, even if it's in the rough, you can still reach the green. So like I said, it just kind of has its benefits. So uh, I don't think it's a, a, a terrible shot. And again, here's max club. I'm going to go to half club. I'm going to go to about quarter club. And I'll do this with some uh, top spin here. So let me think about this. So quarter club is about, I've been playing at about 3.2, give or take. I don't know if I'm spot on quarter club. But at 3.2, that's about five rings, maybe a little bit more than five rings. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to just try to go a little outside five rings. It's really hard to tell with my finger on that spot whether or not I did it or not. And it looks like it was just not enough correction. So that, I, I think I went the full five rings. I think it might have just been a little bit less than or you know a little bit higher number than 3.2 maybe say 4.0 and only or no 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 that's opposite. I was, maybe I was inside a quarter club, and the number should have been smaller. Maybe the number that I should have been using was uh, 2.5 per ring, for example. You know, maybe it was a little bit farther than quarter club. If I'd used 2.5 and went about seven rings, it probably would have been spot on there. <clears throat> But uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, just something where you can take advantage of an easy eagle. Um, and I was glad that we got this hole and I was able to at least show you that shot. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have some snow gloves. Of course, you don't have to waste them on Tour 10. I'm not encouraging you to. Because um, if you don't have a lot of balls, I highly recommend you saving them for the tournament. Uh, I think it's going to have more use in the tournament. Whether or not I win this match, I could care less. It's just a Tour 10 match. So if you don't have the balls to waste, don't waste them. That's the best advice I can give you. But if you do, like me, um, feel free to pull them out whenever. Uh, it's not a big deal to me. Uh, I'll pull it out on Tour 2. I'll be that guy. Well, nobody's ever made a post about me doing it. But I'll be the guy that pulls it out on Tour 2 just to hit some crazy green shot which has no value <laughs> because the wind's like three, but that'll be me. That'll be something that I do. Um, you know, just in friendlies, just messing around or whatever, just to see, you know, a crazy shot that you would never be able to pull off in any other situation because you're on the short tees and you have this power ball that no matter what the wind is in Tour 2, you'll never get it there without it because the wind's not high enough. So, okay, we are coming up on an hour of content, and I do think that I have a lot of information for you guys in this tour. I am going to do at least one more hold, though. We're going to try to do some bonus time, um, and I just want to kind of talk a little bit more about this, just so you can, guys can uh, get a sense of this. So let's do at least one more here. Um, that may or may not have been a replay. Uh, so, so the biggest reason that I don't think it was a replay is because of his trophy count. That is right around the trophy count that I would expect somebody to actually be playing Tour 10 right now. So, uh, and plus, not to mention, he went in the water. First off, he didn't eagle, right? So if he doesn't eagle, that's almost a dead giveaway that it's not a replay. Because, for the most part, the game does not... So... It never usually gives albatrosses in replays, but it almost every time on a par five, it'll give the replay an eagle uh, on a par five. And then it almost always, unless it's a drivable, so the drivable can be iffy. It can be either or. Sometimes they'll give you the eagle, and then the other time they won't. So it'll be like 50-50, like a 50-50 split. <clears throat> 
but on the par four, for the most part, it'll always be a birdie no matter what. So. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this hole. I have my Kingmaker back on since it's straight into the wind. Um, now I did want to talk about this hole because there's there's two things to consider here. Uh, getting it down there far enough can be a good thing. Uh, you're going to see me try to beat this as far as I can. Now it's unfortunate that I don't have you know a better driver here. Um, I'm going to kind of aim for the center of this fairway here and just beat it as far as I can with four or five. Oh no, that push right's I bet you're going to cost me. Let's see if it holds. Nope, I'm good. But, uh, so, you know, that's as far as I can beat it down there. And, uh, it's not going to be enough to get to the green here. Now, there's certain ways that I can cheat the green, cheat the green on this hole. Um, it's super risky, though. Uh, not the smartest approach. I don't, it's not, it doesn't come highly recommended from me to try it. But, uh, you can use that cliff there. Uh, it's kind of like a glitch in the game, but you can use that, uh, super hill. It depends on the wind, though. There's only certain winds that it's going to be beneficial that you can actually pull it off on. But you can use that mega hill to basically cheat the game a little bit because you can put your shot arc at a super high elevation, which will create basically like distance that you would never be able to hit, for example. And look at it. If this would have been downwind, I had enough club to get there. So doesn't that just suck? But this is like what I was talking about. You can see how high of an elevation this is. If you aim over here, you can actually get it to, you know, go over towards the hole sometimes. But uh, for this video, uh, not really important. Again, for a layup here, I'm going to go, you know, 10, 11 rings and do it with a little bit of curl. Just the, that's that curl that you saw me put on, it's counter curl, right? So you see the way the wind's pointed. I just want to emphasize a lot of the curl shots that I play. Um, you got to think it's because of the magnitude of the wind and the way that it's pointed. So, for example, there's no real set number that I use, but you know, if it's pointed left to right like this, you know, that's like equivalent to like two bars of side spin. So, if you wanted to counter it with side or side spin, you probably have to use at least two bars to the left, but what I did is, you know, I do it with some curl, um, and you see what he did, he actually didn't do enough to counter completely, but it's irrelevant, it's not, it's not really that important of a shot, like you don't have to, you know, do perfect curl there to hit the fairway. The more important is on like shots like this, so we're going to try it here, and we are shooting to a higher elevation here. Um, kind of towards the min club a little bit. What I like to do is I like to do this one with left spin because it usually comes in more towards the hole here. You can actually get a nice little groove here. You can actually see right here it's going towards the hole. So we're going to try that. Um, and I'm going to take off this side, this top, uh, this back spin whatsoever because I think you can benefit from it rolling out here. So let me go here. And I'm going to use, you know, about 1.7-ish, go about six rings, and just use just enough to counter it back, ever so slightly. Of course, perfect ball. Let's see if I can't get it going somewhere towards the hole. And it was. It was. It was kind of on line. But uh, it looks like I might have needed to pull back just another uh, yard because you could see the way that uh, the ball trail... The shot trail was kind of changing trajectories. It was kind of, you know, springing forward a little bit farther. So that's what I was originally trying to do with the backspin, but then I was worried about the ball stopping. So what you should do to counter that, as opposed to, you know, using the backspin, I should have just corrected an extra ring, which I didn't do. So I went pretty much spot on six rings there, but I probably should have taken just an extra ring and gone seven. 
And that would have basically accounted for that little bit of downward trajectory from the from the straight downwind here. So just something to keep in mind. <clears throat> and again, with this guy's uh, trophy count, uh, you know, I would almost su suspect this guy might actually be live here. Because I, I wouldn't imagine that they would match me up with a replay. The, the dead giveaways are the ones where they actually find me an opponent where their trophy count is very similar to mine, within a couple hundred. Um, that's almost a dead giveaway that you're at a replay. Because, shoot, I mean, I just tried to match myself. For example, I tried to match myself. In Tour 10, it spun for 20 seconds. That just leads me to believe that there's no way that they're actually going to give me a live opponent. But uh, the exception to that would be, you know, a 3,000 trophy guy here, which you're seeing. Good, we got another replay. So this is three of the holes, but I think there's even more than this. There's five or six. We didn't get any of the newer ones. But uh, I have worked through those on some spooky cliffs. Um, and the way that I like to do this, you know, especially with the, uh, you know, I like to have a lot of forward momentum. You're going to see on this shot, it's going to spring forward quite a bit here. And, uh, you know, with that left, that right to left wind, it's going to kind of change my shot arc significantly. Um, and again, I'm going to go at least five full rings here. Uh, and this is the one hole that I do love to do the curl on. Highly recommend doing curl. Um, it creates it more of like a, uh, you know, it gives you a little bit more funnel. And you're actually seeing it here. It's rolling off this hill real nice. And you see how it just keeps the most fluid momentum. Um, usually brings it down right towards the hole when you do this. So uh, highly recommend, you know, curl on this hole. You see I got it to a yard. Now, it's not always enough to win this. But uh, it's a very consistent shot. You see, I use that that slope as kind of just like a spring fluid board to where it like just kind of, you know, springs right off that slope and just keeps its momentum. Doesn't get caught up on the fringe or nothing. So the only thing you got to be careful of is making sure your ball trail is kind of in the right spot, which mine was. So what I'll do is, let's say that wind was completely reversed. Let's talk about that. I won't go full curl there. I might not even curl it, to be honest with you. Like, that's the big difference. Like, I'll just use the side spin. And that'll be enough shot correction for me. This is actually really good, too. So his is coming off real nice, too. So we're actually going to be in a dogfight here. He might actually pass the hole. Nope. He's inside there, and it's closer than mine. <clears throat> so, again, I don't know if that's a live opponent. I'm assuming it's probably not. So, that's the only thing about, uh, you know, me trying to show you this video. I'm assuming, you know, for the most part, you're not going to have to deal with too many replays. This is just something that I kind of have to deal with because of my trophy count. Um, they're not going to give me a live player at 3,000 some trophies for whatever reason. I don't know why. I can't make any sense of it as to why that they would restrict that. Um, just one of the silly things about this game. So it can actually be a grind because, I mean, you see, you know, I'll hit a, I'll hit a couple shots there to a yard and then, like, lose. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's just something you got to deal with. That's the only reason that, you know, I hate coming back and actually, like, doing these videos... It's because I have to do it via replay, and uh, all the shots, you know, two out of three times are going to be, you know, tight every time. You, you, but uh, the one thing that it does show you, I mean, you, get, you guys get to see a bunch of quality shots here. You see some of the best of the best here. Because I, I know you've, you know, you've done some matches where, you know, the guy will be three yards, two, three yards on that hole. Um, and if you can just kind of get the method down, 
uh, you can beat you can beat that two three yard shot. So this is good here. We got a, another new hole. It's unfortunate of the wind. This is going to be a pure layup. But uh, this is another one of those holes that I'm just mentioning that's on this tour. Uh, you can get your eagle out right and just win this hole. The biggest thing for this one is just trying to, trying to get your power set correctly when you're actually able to go for it. Now I can still make this from this other fairway. So uh, that's what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to show you kind of the best approach here. Um, I don't recommend driving it over to where that guy did. So for starters, I'm going to show you about driving this hole where I would highly recommend you guys trying to put it when you have to lay up. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll side spin it completely like this. Um, and I try to anticipate, does it get to the end of the bunker? That's kind of my target, is I'm trying to make sure that it gets to the end of the bunker. So I'll do it with just a touch of side spin here, or a touch of uh, top spin to make sure that it's out towards the end. And then I'll just go just a tiny bit of power and full curl. And that was just ever so slightly full power. Um, all I'm trying to do here is just get it to the end of the bunker, kind of close to it. Um, you know, but I had, you know, at least two. What, what's nice about spinning it towards that bunker is it resists going into the bunker. It basically funnels away from the bunker. So you have a little bit of margin of error. But uh, when you hit it close to that bunker, it gives you the best angle coming into this green. I have a much better angle coming into this green than this guy does. Doesn't mean he can't make his, because he can. So if you're accidentally over here, not the end of the world, but uh, if you want to increase your likelihood of being able to make this hole, I recommend putting it where I did, or similarly. It doesn't have to be spot on, but it's kind of like parallel to the end of the bar bunker. You know, well, you're just trying to draw a straight line from the end of the bunker and you're trying to basically be right at the end there. And then, you know, kind of close. The closer you get it to it, the better your angle is. And you can actually see that here. Very nice. Like, I get to go up this fairway here. Uh, and what I like to do is, you know, put some backspin on this. Uh, you know, it's never really going to stop. Now, since it's so into the, uh, into the wind here. So I am going to be more towards max club. Um, and you see shot correction. Now I like to get it to where it's stopping right around here. So that's what I'm trying to groove here. Is I'm trying to get it going this way and then I'll do, you know, my 11 rings. I need to go at least 11 here. And then I'll do it uh, with just slight curl back too. Just so it doesn't end up too far. Uh, I'm hoping that right doesn't end up screwing me. We'll see. I'm worried that it's going to be too far right with that shank. And it is. <sighs> so that's unfortunate. Um, I didn't really get a great, but you saw I countered it ever so slightly back to the left just because of the fact that wherever I was trying to groove it, you know, it's not going to go there because of the way that it was going, the wind was pointing left to right. So, you know, it's going to resist following that ball trail because of the way that it's pointed. And, uh, you know, when it gets to 10 miles per hour, it's just too much wind to try to overcome. And, you know, my shot would have been very close had it not, uh, not, not great ball shanked right there. But, you know, this is a good thing. We got to see another, because there's still like three, at least three, all the holes on this cliff course, all the par threes are part are in this set. Um, so the way that I like to do this is with backspin here. Now I would usually use about three and a half bars. If you're seeing that I'm putting it, what, two and a half? Because it's into the wind here. And you see kind of where I'm grooving it there. And then again, this is a downhill target. So I'm going to go at least nine rings here.
at least. May not even be enough. There's ten rings. How about that? Counter. And again, you're seeing two and eight. Ugh! Just missed ever so slightly. You saw I used two and a half bars there when I would usually use three and a half bars. And it's because it's straight into the wind. You're seeing it check up far more than it usually would. So the mistakes that I'll usually see guys do, and, he, and let's talk about that a little bit here, is guys, they'll still go into the three, three and a half, okay? So for the most part, this is too much spin. Now there is exceptions. You can land it very close to the edge of the fairway. That's kind of your exception here. But, uh, you know, chances are this guy's not going to make it to the hole. There's almost no chance that he has of getting to the hole because he's taken off too much um, in terms of backspin. Uh, this is into the wind, which is going to, and, and you see he's not countering it in any way. Um, and here you're seeing it. It's just coming up two, three yards short. It's not getting to the top of that hill. It's not getting its chance to come down. It's just too much backspin. Now, there is an exception. You can take it dangerously close to the edge of the fairway, and his his spin would have still been good. But it's a risky shot. So is that something that you really want to do? I mean, do you really want to be taking that risky shot and uh, potentially landing it on the rough? You can just take off a little bit of backspin like you saw me do. <clears throat> And uh, vice versa for downwind. Let's say that was downwind. I might use four and a half backspin, five even, depending on how strong it is. If it's pushing, you know, 14 miles per hour, five backspin. No, no question. You want to hit more of a stop shot in that scenario. And uh, here's the problem. I have B-52 on. Uh, not the greatest club because it doesn't have five backspin. <laughs> So, all things to consider, but uh, the importance of this video is just kind of understanding the way that the uh, wind, the effects of the wind on the ball, uh, and if you can just kind of, you know, get a, a good general, you know, idea of these, now it looks like we're getting another hole here. So I'm glad that, uh, you know, I extended this video a little bit. We'll end it after this video, after this hole. This will be my last hole with you guys. And uh, hopefully, you know, you find it very beneficial. Uh, what's nice about this hole is there's quite a, quite a few different methods to play it. There's a backspin shot with a guardian for your second shot. And uh, there's a topspin shot through the rough with usually a short iron or it also can be a wood as well. Uh, you're seeing this guy use navigator. Uh, I might just go ahead and, you know, in his video he uses navigator. I'll go down and use navigator too. Uh, you know, I like to, you know, at times make things fair for, you know, both of us. Uh, the only problem with this is it starts bringing the rough into question. And now I'm going to be in the rough. So I probably just cost myself uh, by matching this guy's ball. So I could have eliminated the bunker from even play by still putting on a... Uh, I could have still... I could have eliminated that. And it's unfortunate I did that because I did want to talk about this shot. But let me talk about it with his. So what you're seeing happen here, you're seeing him do one, two bars, which is pretty spot on. Um, it looks like a pretty good correction. You, know, you always have to under adjust here because it's an uphill target. So, uh, you know, five rings here will be too much for a guardian. And it looks like that's about how much he went. Um, and again, this is one of the one instances where I could say you could just overcorrect. And it uh, might actually be, you know, a beneficial way because you really don't need to, especially with the slope there. You don't really need to worry about the, you know, the shot correction change because of the, uh, because of the bunker there. Now let me just show you guys how to get out of this scenario um, because I'm not dead to rights, um, and I just want to kind of show you that uh, you can still 
this is actually probably too much, but uh, it might be the only safe way for me to get over that bunker, make sure that I'm not in the bunker. So what you're going to see me do here is first I'll play the wind. Um, and first I'm playing the wind, so I haven't even started. Then I'm going to hook on top of that. So I'm going to go two full, two, two and a half bullseyes on top of that. So the first important part is hitting the fairway. Hopefully I hit the rough, which I did. And then there it is, coming into the green, just a little long. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, and you know, that shot, if I was playing live opponents, like, you know, that guy would probably, you know, reach out and be like, wow. Uh, because, you know, guys just aren't used to seeing stuff like that. And they don't even realize that that's part of the game, that that's even a possibility. Um, so, what I was doing there, if, if you want me to, you know, kind of talk about that a little bit. First, I was playing the wind. You know, the wind was very strong. So, I was playing it like 10 rings, for example. So, uh, if you could visualize an entire bullseye, the entire, you know, span of it. I was basically going over to the left of that, right off the bat, before even doing anything. And then on top of that, I just did two full, bull, two and a half full bullseyes. So, you know, I was using the right of my bullseye to the left. So that was like my first bullseye. Then I stacked another one on top and then went another half. So that's what you saw me do there. Now I am going to utilize all my spin on this sucker. I feel like I'm going to need it. And uh, you see how it's shooting off to the left here? I'm not necessarily worried about that. I'm going to need to go at least a full 11 rings here. This is very downhill. I might need just a slight counter back too. Because of what I've been, you know, reiterating time and time again in these videos. Ah, it's just coming in too hot. Crap. That is not the greatest shot. Um, you know, I probably needed 15 rings there, to be honest with you. It's so downwind. And uh, plus, uh, you know, here's the fact that... So the one thing that I forgot, which I was telling you that it was going to counter back to the, the right, the one thing I wasn't... forgot to even mention to you guys is that it's springboarding forward as well on top of that. Which, you know, I forgot to even add it into my correction. So you just saw me there launch pad it. And it's because I didn't go enough rings. I, I can literally tell you I probably needed 15 rings. That that uh, win there added probably at least, at a minimum, uh, you know, four or five rings for me. Uh, and you're seeing him do the same thing. Not nearly as bad, though. So you're seeing him take this one down. It's unfortunate that I couldn't show you, you know, a better shot for this. But uh, it was all about my correction. I was probably off by about five rings. So just keep that in mind, you know, I went about 11. I, I completely just disregarded the fact that it was going to springboard forward. Um, I knew it was going to do it, and I just forgot about it. I was The only thing I was thinking about was that it was going to, uh, you know, be too far to the right. So keep that in mind, you know, downwind versus, especially like that, where it's shooting down to a lower elevation, you know, you have to consider five yards. So... There's one or two, like, for me, that's five rings. It's even more. I think on that hole, I think I'm supposed to play, like, 0.75 per ring or something crazy on B-52. Like, if I wanted to actually, you know, count, like, counter that, I need to play at, like, 0.75. So what is that? 0.75 per ring is, like, 20 rings for that wind? No. 18 rings. And I went 11. So that is quite a bit off. And sure enough, seven yards. I was off by seven yards, so seven rings. So uh, that would have been pretty spot on. Um, just something to keep in mind. Um, hopefully you find this uh, video helpful. Uh, you know, you got to see a lot of wins firsthand. Uh, we did get to a lot of the, you know, the shootout holes. 
Um, it's unfortunate that I shouldn't show you a better shot on that last one, but uh, keep in mind, the only thing that I was wrong on was probably being about six yard, six rings short there. I needed to overcorrect six more, and you know, it would be vice versa. If the wind, let's talk about the, the opposite wind there. Say it's into the wind. Then maybe I'll only play two, two top spin because I need to run out a little bit more. I can't have it just check up and not make it up the hill. So for starters, I'll use two rings of backspin or two bars, and then you know I'll do the opposite. Um, I'll need to account for at least you know four extra rings minimum, minimum. Now I'm talking about uh, you know on something accurate like B52. If you're using Goliath, that's at least you need to go at least a full two rings extra because Goliath isn't as accurate it's like more two per ring you need to account for an extra four yards there so that means you need to go two full rings so one of the reasons that you know I can just kind of barrel through these tours under normal circumstances you know when I'm not actually like talking at the same time I can think a little bit better and uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm just mentally thinking about this in my head and I can just kind of take advantage of holes like that. You know, that guy puts it, you know, four yards. I can get inside that, you know, every time because what I'm thinking, I'm running through all these things in my mind and I'm just like, oh, I need to account for four extra yards. And then sure enough, when you do that, it's just spot on. It's just, it's just something to think about. So hopefully you guys found this uh Tour 10 uh, talk, very helpful. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my uh, videos already, uh, feel free to. If uh, you need a little bit more clarity on anything, feel free to comment on the video. Um, I'll try my best to answer some questions. Um, aside from that, uh, good luck with your Tour 10. Um, more importantly, good luck with, uh, you know, factoring in all these extra factors and actually thinking about the way that the ball is going to change because of the dr dramaticness of these winds being like, you know, 10 plus miles per hour. Think, just start thinking about what that's going to impact on your ball just a little bit more as opposed to just the ring system. There's much more to the game than just the ring system. First off, the ring system is just an estimation anyway. So if you just play your rings, you're not factoring in enough. So, you know, I'll see a lot of times the guys that are just playing the ring system, it, I just see them correct their shot, and then I'm just thinking in my mind, like, uh, I'm not even going to, you know, I, I'm not even worried about this match because, you know, the wind's 13 miles per hour on the shootout, and he's only playing his ring, so he's going to be off. But he's going to be off by what you just saw me do in the last hole. Maybe even more than that, because he was, like, I was thinking about one of the things when I needed to be thinking about both of them on that last shootout. I was thinking about the way that it was going to, you know, go to the right. Not necessarily, I just totally disregarded that, oh, it's going to also, you know, springboard forward at least an extra four yards. So, you know, keeping all those together, factoring all those things in. Uh, just be mindful of that and always thinking. Uh, and uh, I think you'll have great success if you do. So uh, keep that in mind and uh, good luck with uh, Tour 10, Tour 11, all, all these later tours. Uh, I think emulating some of what I just mentioned there uh, will really help you out dramatically. So uh, good luck, guys.